Alright, so what are we doing today? Something a little bit different than usual here is going to be um, the character action object method for memorizing a whole deck of cards. This is the first time I've actually done it. Um, I just finished creating and memorizing the character action object for every card in this deck. So I haven't mastered the technique by any means. Um, but I wanted to try and do this in person, you know, so you guys could see it in play um, as I do it. So I just finished memorizing, or at least attempting to memorize. We'll see how well I did in a minute. Um, the whole deck. Um, before I start, I've got a few rules here. Um, so each suit has a rule applied to it. Hearts are emotional value. Um, so either characters, actions, or objects that remind me of emotion of some sort. Spades were action-based. Diamonds were material value, so a character, action, or object that reminds me of material values in some way. And then clubs were intelligence values. Um, so characters, actions, or objects that remind me of intelligence. Then I have a few specific rules for each card that I might go over in a minute. Um, the hardest one that I had trouble with, trouble memorizing, was the suit of hearts, which might be kind of telling about me, considering that's supposed to be about emotion. Um, another rule that I applied to everything was every eight in the suits is a monster card. Um, just because I was having trouble remembering eights, so I just decided that all my eights mean a monster. So either Bigfoot or Rumpelstiltskin or Frankenstein's monster or um, Godzilla are the four monsters that I applied to the eights. So this is the method for counting cards that a lot of gamblers use. Um, I am only just now deciding to memorize it because or to learn it because until now I never really thought it had a practical value. I still don't think it has a practical value because I'm not a gambler. But I thought it would be kind of cool to show off. Um, now again, this is the first time I've done it. So I'm not sure how well I've done. We'll see with the demonstration. So how I'm going to gauge myself to score myself is I will go through each suit first and I'll um, put up little editing marks so that you guys can see how I see the suit and then after I shuffle these of course or I'm going to sort these out and then I'll walk through them with you guys after after I and then I'll do the editing <coughs> um, and then after I walk through them all with you I'm going to do a demonstration of me trying the method out for the very first time and see how well I've memorized each suit. All right, so let's see how well I do. All right, so I've organized all five suits. They're not shuffled at the moment. Um, if all goes as planned, I should be able to walk through. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all four suits without them being shuffled, so that you guys can see um, each character, action, and object that I have associated to it. Um, then I will walk through each suit one time. Um, with the face of the suit, and then I'll try to remember the story, action, object on the back of it. Um, then I'll walk through each suit again with the story, action, and object and try to remember the card number associated to it, the card value associated to it. 
then, if I'm feeling confident, if I haven't embarrassed myself enough, I will shuffle the cards all together, walk through all 52 cards, and try to remember um, that. It's not exactly how you'd use it in play, but I don't think I'm at that level yet where I can actually play a game of cards and use this practice. <laughs> I only just now learned the method, so this is just kind of a practice run, and I'm sharing the practice run with you guys. So I will start with spades. So what I've done is I've written the character, action, and object on the back of each card of this deck to help me practice it. Um, I will, I'm on my honor not to look at the back of the card, not to cheat while I'm going over this. I'm sure I will fail enough that you guys will know that I'm not cheating. <laughs> um, but this way I can also use it as proof that I know what I'm talking about as well. So front of the cards this time for spades. We have the king of spades, which I'm holding it right there. I can't see the back of the card or anything. Um, King of Spades should be Kingpin Crushing Skulls. If you can see that. Kingpin Crushing Skulls, very vivid imagery, and that's kind of the trick here is to use vivid imagery. Um, why did I pick Kingpin Crushing Skulls? Kind of obvious. King of Spades, Kingpin Crushing Skulls, that's a very violent action, and as I said, each, each suit has a rule associated with it. So Kingpin, Crushing Skulls made a lot of sense for this set. Um, the next card is the Queen of Spades. Queen, I believe, was Victoria Rules England. Okay. Victoria rules England. England. I love England. What else do I need to say? I didn't really... That one... You don't always have to abide by the rule if you can memorize it without the rule. But the rule helps sometimes, in my opinion. Jack of Spades. Jack of Spades was... I don't remember what I had for Jack of Spades. And I'm going to kick myself because I know it's... Gambit throwing cards. Okay. So, Gambit throwing cards. Just another character throwing cards. Gambit is a jack of all trades, I guess. That one I might need to associate to memory a bit better. The tin of spades. Pharaoh dying of plagues. Pharaoh died of the result of the tenth plague in the Bible. The Exodus account. Nine of spades is the ninth doctor running from the TARDIS. Eccleston, I think was his name. Nine is, again, self-explanatory. He was the ninth doctor running, so that's an action um, memory. Eight of spades was... Eight is a monster. Bigfoot taking a shower. Bigfoot taking a shower. Um monster card. Again, sometimes the rule helps you memorize um, what is in the deck. Seven of spades is seven of nine assimilating the Voyager. Seven of nine was a character in Star Trek Voyager. He was a Borg. So Voyager assimilating is an action. Um, seven of nine, seventh position in the deck. So Six of spades. What did I have down for six of spades? I 
think because I'm putting pressure on myself, it's making it a little bit harder to recall it. But six of spades. I don't remember what I had for six of spades. Carito dreaming of games. Carito was an anime character, six, because he's black. Or not, he's black, but he wears a lot of black. Um, so yeah, Carito dreaming of games. I have to keep that one in mind a little bit better. Maybe I should make a new rule for sixes, because they were kind of hard to remember, too. Um, five. This is an easy one for me. Lando Calrissian was a gambler. So, cards. He was introduced in Star Wars Episode Five. So, fifth card. All makes sense. Lando gambling at Sabacc. Sabacc is a Star Wars game. Um kind of sad that I know Star Wars enough that I can use it as memory pegs. Four horsemen bringing destruction. Three was a musketeer fighting with a sword. Three musketeers and then sword because it's an action or it's a violent thing. And then a fighting is again an action, so. Two is thing one and thing two from like the cat in the hat, playing with a hat. And then ace of spades was Iden Versio from the new Star Wars game, flying a TIE fighter. I, she's a pilot, so ace made sense there. Again, like I said, aces are really easy to remember already. Like, if you see an ace get played, you're going to remember that. So you don't necessarily have to create a character, action, or object around an ace. Um, I did it for completionist's sake, but I haven't had a trouble remembering the aces at all in the whole time that I've done this. God, this is going to be a long upload. This is already, like, eight minutes long, and I haven't even uploaded it yet. I haven't even done the editing. Okay, so next we'll move on to hearts. Um, I'll probably skip the reverse version of this. I'm not sure. This is taking a while. So, hearts. King of hearts was Han Solo saying, I know. Um, it's upside down. Han saying, I know. And then I know, of course, Queen is going to be Princess Leia watches Carbonite. Um, Han and Leia had to go together. So that, again, if you can combine cards as well, that's going to make them easier to memorize them. So the Queen and King are both Han and Leia. Um, I guess that's the ultimate opinion of love in my mind. Okay, my brother's name is Joshua. We call him JT. So I have an emotional connection to my brother because he's my brother. Um, so, Jack, J, of hearts, emotion, it's kind of obvious it was going to be my brother. JT <laughs> loses a tooth. That was a funny story. Um, so just, that was easy enough. Ten of hearts is going to be Juliet stabs herself. That's embarrassing. That's my grandmother. <clears throat> Which means the next card, nine, is... Um, yeah, ten is my grandmother. I thought nine and ten were connected. Like I said, I had trouble doing hearts. Um, this is where I'm going to probably need to practice the most. Um, nine of hearts is Belle loves the beast. I probably could have benefited from actually practicing this before I did the video, but I wanted to do it in person. So, eight, my rule for eights was that eights are all monsters. Monster associated with love is Rumpelstiltskin, because in Once Upon a Time, he was also the Beast. And eight and nine together is Beauty and the Beast. So, Rumpelstiltskin makes a deal, because he's always making the deal, dearie. Six and seven, that's going to be Romeo and Juliet. Romeo stabbed... Uh, no, Romeo, Romeo was poisoned. Juliet stabs herself. This one's Juliet. God, man, I did it again. 
Okay, Lucy Hartfilia opens the gate. Lucy Hartfilia was an anime character. Seven because she was a seventh, the seventh member of a guild, or member of a seven-person guild, opening the gate. That's what that was her thing. She, um, her magic powers, opening mystical gates. Okay, six of hearts is going to be. There's a requipping armor. Yep. Okay. Five is my mom. Yep. Mom burns the, burns the stove. That was a good funny story as well. She almost killed us all when she caught the stove on fire. Two and three is Romeo and Juliet. Four. I don't remember what I have down for four. Oh, light talks to Shinigami. That was right, because four was also connected. And another one, that's L. Never mind. Okay, light talks to Shinigami. This one is... Juliet stabs herself. That is how the story went, I think. She stabbed herself and he was poisoned. Romeo was poisoned. Ace of Hearts is Irene Adler. No, not Irene Adler. Oh. Oh. Asuna. Asuna was an anime character. A. A for Asuna. Um... Asuna cooking a dish. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I caught myself on that one. I'm still counting that one. Okay. Clubs. My rule for clubs was that I would associate intelligent characters to the club. Um, so, intelligent characters. We'll start with King again. Work our way down to Ace. King of and of clubs, in my mind, was Arthur Conan Doyle because he's like the father of mystery. So Arthur Conan Doyle writes a book. Yes, Arthur Conan Doyle. Okay. Uh, queen of mystery was Agatha Christie. She was famous for when she went. She disappeared. So Agatha Christie goes into hiding. Okay. Jack of clubs. Ooh, jack of clubs. Mm -mm. It's not Jack Sparrow. Okay, this is the 11th Doctor fighting Daleks. Destroying Daleks. Okay, it was 1.0. Destroying Daleks, fighting Daleks. Okay. 10 of... Clubs, Hercule Pro on the Orient Express. Okay, nine is Scully saying nine like German. Okay, Scully, my skull. Yeah, I forgot that I gave him a memory peg. Kind of funny memory pegs. Okay. So far, I think I'm doing okay considering I haven't practiced this yet. Eight. Eight. Of clubs. Not 
Very good. I don't remember it. Oh, right. Eight. Eight are monsters. Monsters. Godzilla stomping people. Okay. Seven is Euros controlling everyone, because I remember five, six, and seven is all going to be Sherlock, Mycroft, and Euros. I did, like, smartest. So Euros controlling everyone, because that was the thing that she did. It's kind of scary. This is Mycroft being the government. Yep. And this is Sherlock's also crime. Four of clubs is L is too smart. Anime. Three of clubs is C3PO because three and then C is clubs, so C3PO made sense. Translating code. Two is Thrawn looking at art because that was one of his hobbies. Thrawn. Looking at art. Uh, okay, Thrawn, because T, and he's smart. So, Ace was Aldric Kibri. He's a character that I invented. He was always getting sick and, um, or hurt or something like that. So it was funny just to say Aldric getting sick. Yep. Okay, so we're three suits down. I think I did okay so far, considering I haven't practiced this at all yet. This is the first time I'm practicing it, which just shows... I thought this was going to be very hard to learn, because I was just... The reason I put it off for so long is I didn't want to create 52 small stories in my head and associate them all to cards. Um, but then I was doing this last night with my brother. I was just up late last night with my brother writing the cards down and putting names on them. And even he was memorizing them as quickly as I was writing the names down on them. And we were quizzing, I was quizzing him, and we we messed around with the cards a little bit. Um, and he was memorizing them as fast as I was. And he doesn't, he's done no practice, no training, nothing like that. Or not as much as I have, anyway. And he's memorizing them so quickly. So just, I surprised myself with how quickly this um, little card method works. Okay, so the final set final value was diamonds so every the rule for diamonds was all the cards of diamonds will have stories um, of value of some sort so king of diamonds is link from the legend of zelda collecting rupees uh, not the whole thing collecting rupees okay queen of diamonds is zelda from the legend of zelda Controlling the Divine Beasts. Because Divine Beasts are power powerful. And then having Zelda and Link together was made sense. Um, Jack of Diamonds. Jack is a pirate. Jack Sparrow is a pirate. So he's obsessed with money. It made sense to put him on here since he's also a Jack. So Jack drinking rum. Because what else does Jack do? Okay. Ten of Diamonds. This is where it's going to get tricky on me, isn't it? Ten of Diamonds. I think it's Natsu. I think Natsu 7. It might be Natsu eating fire. I don't think it is. Mm, David Tennant traveling through space. Obvious, because he's the 10th Doctor. Although he's not associated with value in any way, so I don't know. 10, it's... It should be painfully obvious. Okay. Nine of diamonds. Nine of diamonds. I don't remember what I associated with the nine of diamonds. I don't remember. Oh, nine cuckoos, cuckoos killing everything. 
So, again, Legend of Zelda, Cuckoos. I thought that'd be easier to remember because there's nine of them, but apparently, apparently not. Um, eight of diamonds. Maybe I need to work on diamonds, too, because I've missed two already. <coughs> eight of diamonds. I'm going to kill myself because I know this is going to be painfully obvious when I look at the back of the card. Eight is my monsters. Monster, scaring, children. The monsters in Frankenstein's monster, scaring children. Eight are my monster cards. I need to work on that because apparently eights are still going to be hard to remember even with that rule. Seven of diamonds. This one is Natsu eating. Fire. Yeah, Natsu is an anime character and he can eat fire. Um, six of diamonds. Steve from Minecraft mining blocks, because blocks have six sides. Um, yep, Steve mining blocks. Five. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. And I can't come back to it, can I? It's a weird one. I don't remember it. Okay, that's right. <clears throat> I might have to rework five. Abraham Lincoln on the five dollar bill. Um, I thought that would be easy because Abraham Lincoln on a five dollar bill, five dollars are a valuable item, so five dollar bill, five. I thought I'd have plenty, but the character is the hard part to remember. Four is Angelica from Pirates of the Caribbean, Finding the Fountain of Youth. Three is not Thanos. Ganon, Ganondorf from Legend of Zelda, holding the Triforce, Tri-3. So, Triforce, Ganon holding the Triforce. Ganon, Ganondorf. Two is a pirate sailing a ship, because pirates are obsessed with treasure. Sailing the ship. And then Ace is Irene Adler. Adler. Counting diamonds. Great. Alright, so... I didn't do perfect for that demonstration. But I think I did okay, considering this is ze on zero practice at all. Um... I kind of want to shuffle them all together and walk through all 50 key cards and see how well I do that way, but I'm scared to try that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video here, and if you guys want me to shuffle the cards and walk through all 52 cards and try to call out the card numbers as I walk through them, maybe I'll go back and do another video, like a part two to this. Um, but in the meantime, I will end it at this and call it a night. 322. Um, So yeah, go ahead and answer in the comments below if you want me to go back and do the second half 
of this video and try to call out each one. I may have to edit my uh, memory pegs for each card because some of these cards I did not remember as easily as I thought I would. The Abraham Lincoln one, for example, that was really hard to remember. It shouldn't have been that hard to remember. Um, I, that's where I'm going to end it, is right here. Uh, have a good day, and see you in the next video.